Um, so the vehicle is equipped with an interlock, which means there's two things, that the lift won't work unless you have proper things set in place. Additionally, you won't be able to drive the vehicle if the lift's deployed or part of the interlock is in place. So in order to operate the lift, three things have to be happen. The vehicle has to be running or on run on the key. The parking brake needs to be engaged and there's a lever. It's in a, next to the seat there and the vehicle has to be in park, okay? So if those three things aren't in line, the lift will not operate. And one easy way to tell, and I'll show you that. Another thing, these doors do lock in this position. So if it's a windy day, oh, you don't have that. So there's a lock, you'll feel it when it gets to that position and you can lock it in the position there. Same thing on this door. If these lights are not on the lift, the lift will not operate. That means there's no power going to the lift. So if something's not right within the interlock, you don't have the parking brake, it's not set to park, or the vehicle's not to run. There is an on-off switch here on the lift. It's okay to keep it on. It does not drain. Because of the interlock, it does not drink, draw power. So it's okay to keep it on, and you see the green light next to it, and that would go off, and so would the lights if I turned it off. So you can keep that on. Uh, in terms of lift operation, it's very important that you keep this hooked up here. If this drops and hits the ground, this whole case breaks, and you can't just buy it, like the outer case to it. So uh, on, the, on the lift itself, there is fold on fold and up and down. The first operation that you're gonna use when the, vehicle, when the lift is inside the vehicle is the fold and unfold. One thing I will say, if you haven't used the lift in a while or travel a long distance with the lift folded up, it's always a good idea to hit fold until you hear that high-pitched nails on the chalkboard sound uh, just to load the hydraulics. To deploy the lift, you're going to use unfold, which will bring the lift to floor height of the vehicle. And then down to bring it down to ground height. Especially when the lift is new, I always recommend putting a little weight on the lift as it deploys so that transition deploys properly like that. And you can adjust it a little bit and it will go down. A little uneven on the pavement here, so that's why that, that does that. Once you've done that, then you would load the occupant onto the lift. Put the safety belt behind and underneath the handles of the wheelchair. Some people, if you prefer, you can ride up on the lift with the, the occupant. It's up to you if there's room, if you're comfortable, whatnot. I'll bring it back to the height of the vehicle. Uh, you have a transition there. Um, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of the safety features too right now so you wonder if, if certain things happen. It's a real important um, when you're rolling wheelchairs on and off the lift, be very careful of these mechanisms that are on the side because those are sensors in there and if they're not in line, if they get jarred out of place, the lift won't operate because it senses that it's not in place. Um, So it does have a, a pinch feature, so this is kicked. If the occupant in the wheelchair kicks this, the, the lift will stop operating, or if the wheelchair is pushed too far forward. Additionally, if the um, lift is not at the full height, at floor height of the vehicle, and there's pressure put on here, there's an audible and visible alarm. Um, it, it sounds kind of into the vehicle now. And we'll go to the tie downs and, and show how the tie downs work and how they're set up within the vehicle.
Okay. There's a pin that is kind of a lock pin. So in order to remove the seat, you need to pull the pin up on each side and just pull this handle back. The seat is now disattached. There's wheels on the back. You can tilt it and roll it right out. Okay. Same thing going in. A lot of people think that the front pins are what keeps it in place, and it's actually the rear track of the, the seat, the front are just locating pins. And I'm trying to get it even again. Yeah. And then to lock them into place, push them forward. And in the beginning when they're new, they'll be very tight yeah. to do. I don't recommend doing it, it says a note, don't use your feet, yeah. just use your hands only. So the tie downs uh, are similar to the Q strains you might be used to uh, in terms of their operation. They're auto retracting. They do have a tightening dial uh, and a release knob. The only difference is you'll see the male connectors, seatbelt connectors on all the tie downs. They utilize these rather than the pins like they do on the Q strains. Um, so just like any tying down of a wheelchair, the front tie down position should be outside the front wheels, ideally at a 45 degree angle. And the rear should be just inside of the rear wheels, kind of straight on, uh, always connecting to the wheelchair frame, never to any wheels, uh, foot rests, or anything like that. Okay. In terms of the seat belt, I've already set this up and you're probably never going to move this out of position from here. This is for the shoulder belt. Um, it's connected to the floor, it's connected at the shoulder anchor point here, and I'll show you how that all ties together uh, once you've brought a wheelchair into the van and into position. Like anything, practice makes perfect. Um, but once you have a wheelchair into position, occupant of the wheelchair, then there is a red lap belt. And what I said about the seat belt connectors will make a little bit more sense. These connect back of the back tie downs, such. Then the shoulder belt actually comes across the occupant all the way down to the male connection point here on this side. Conversely, there's one, everything is double. So it doesn't matter if it's left or right. If you end up taking these seats out and, and putting the shoulder belt over here, it will connect either way. And that would connect around the occupant as a ladder. Behind, you need to actually have the door open to access the gas door. It is a capless refueling system. The reason I grabbed this is because if you ever run out of gas and you need to use a gas can, if you don't use this, not a single ounce of gasoline from that gas can will make it into this because this depresses and pressurizes the system of the capless refueling system in order to do so. So I'll actually put this over in this door because it makes more sense there than it does, but you cannot open the fuel door without having the vehicle um, door open. Yeah. So the parking brake is engaged, it's in park and the vehicle's to run. <clears throat> if I go to put the vehicle in gear, right now I cannot because of the interlock. I need to really release the parking brake in order to do that. Uh, so if all the parts of the interlock, if the parking brake is engaged, it will not let me put the vehicle in reverse or drive or anything like that. I'll need to release the parking brake in order to do so. There's a handy little tool right here. This is also your jack uh, for all your jack. And all your jack equipment is underneath the passenger side seat kind of on the side right in the step area. But if you want to come around this way. For some reason, the lift is not operating electrically. You 
have somebody stuck in a scenario where you need to get them back out of the van or in the van. You see these notches right here? This very much works just like a floor jack. These no the notches in the end of this fit into the notches of this and you slowly turn it to the left like you would release the pressure in a floor jack ah. and it will let it out. Okay. You wanna make sure that it's tightened up after you do that. Conversely, <clears throat> if the lift is down, you can't get it up, you would stick it into the metal cylinder here and pump it up.